Hofer here. I'm checking out something really cool again, a Maybach, this time a Les Paul model. Thanks to uh, Maybach for loaning me this guitar, for letting me check this one out. Um, they call this one the Lester models, the uh, Les Paul models um, are called Lesters uh, with the uh, Maybach range. And um, just straight out of the box, this um, guitar looks awesome. I mean, I have to say that uh, one thing the Maybach guitars are really good at doing, and we're gonna get to all the specifications of this guitar in this video, but um, it's just the finish, I mean, I mean just the look of the instrument. And, um, and, and the art, and the, you know, there's an art of aging a guitar, of course, and they really got that down. I mean, this uh, is an aged guitar. It's not heavily aged. It's just got a, you know, little bit of wear here on the sides. There's no scratches on the back. There's like this nitro cracking, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, when you have nitro finish uh, and it ages, it kind of cracks with time. And you can simulate that by, um, I don't know exactly how they do it, but I know it has to do with temperature. Uh, you have to like make it hot um, and then cool it down really fast and then nitro will start to crack. And so you can get these little cracks right here. You're not, probably not gonna see them, they're pretty, pretty fine. But um, it's got all this wear here doesn't have anywhere on the neck and I think that is by design too because a lot of people don't like that. Like my um, my Gibson Custom Shop guitar which I did a video on, it's uh, it was also an aged instrument and it had a lot of wear on the neck. I don't mind about that because I actually like shaving the neck off of any finish. I just like it more, uh, you know, you don't stick too much to the neck, it just get, makes it more fluent, the playing. But a lot of people don't like the neck to be finished, so I guess that they did that on purpose, not to finish, uh, not to age anything right here. Another thing, you take this guitar out of the box, out of the case, and all these LP models by Maybach, they are really light guitars. I mean, this guitar right here, um, I guess is, it would be like 3.5 kilograms, maybe a little bit more um, and you can read that on the homepage of Maybach that uh, that's one of the things they um, they really care for that to make the Les Paul um, the Lester models not too heavy so they always want to have them below four kilogram and they achieve that not by um, choosing really light mahogany but maybe they do that too but they do have a chambering technique you know where you do a, a relief uh, weight relief by putting holes into the mahogany. Um, this is something, you know, as long as the instrument still sounds good, I don't mind about that. And I think it's a huge benefit having a light Les Paul. And I don't mind, I couldn't care less if it's chambered or not, as long as it sounds good. And boy, this guitar does sound good. I've said this many times on the channel, the thing I always like to do, it's just, you know, play an instrument like that. Don't use any amplification. And see, do you like the sound of that? Like, does it resonate? And yes, it absolutely does. It, it, it sounds balanced. It has that typical Les Paul tone, you know, bottom heavy, yet a, a lot of brilliance. It's just really good for riffs. I gotta say that this model um, in particular has a lot of brilliance. I mean, you can hear that just when playing like this. It doesn't sound dull at all. And sometimes Les Paul models um, have that. 
especially if you look at uh, the price range where you get these Maybach guitars, it's a, around 2,000 euro, a little bit more, I'm, I'm thinking, like 2,300 euro, something like that, and you can get a Maybach. This is an instrument, has really nice quality. I mean, you can tell uh, it's just built well. The uh, neck has, a, has the right angle to the bridge. Um, the bridge is not set too low or too high, in my opinion. Just really nice. Um, it stays in tune really good. Like, you can just check that easily, you know. Do some really hard bendings, especially on a G string. The G string is always like a string on all guitars, not just Les Pauls. Um, a lot of people say that, you know, it's on Les Pauls, it's just the G string that gets out of tune fast. Um, actually, it's like that on all guitars. Like, uh, talk uh, with classical guitar players about that. They will tell you the same thing that it's always the G string that's like making issues. It's just the way guitars are built, I, I think. <laughs> You know, I'm doing really hard bendings and stays in tune really good. Man, that's actually pretty amazing how good it stays in tune. notice about the Maybach guitars the volume party kind of goes hard which means you uh, need a lot of force to turn it right? and slow on the other hand this one right here the tone control is really fast and I noticed that on the video um, I did on the SG on Monday that they had the same thing so that might be something all Maybachs have that they have a fast tone control and a slow volume control. Now that might be something I personally would like to change um, to have them both be fast. I just like the fast, it's just my personal preference. I like fast tone controls, uh, volume controls and tone controls. Both like them be fast. But it works really well, I mean. Again, check out how well this uh, stays in tune. Really good sign that uh, they did a good job on the quality control of the instrument. Um, you have a lot of problems with um, Gibson guitars that they don't stay in tune and it's because uh, a number of reasons actually. It's because sometimes the bridge isn't anchored really firmly into the body so there might be a bit of movement. I mean you can't see it but um, um, and you can't feel it either. It's, it's just really a tiny bit of movement or it can be the saddle up here that these little um, grooves are not cut right and of course it can be the tuners that they just are not working really well. And if all those little parts have like tiniest of movement, like mic movement, it can lead to your guitar just getting out of tune really fast and it's annoying. It's annoying to have a guitar that you actually like, that sounds good, but it gets out of tune all, all the time. Like, that's just that's a pain in the ass. So in the years, that's been something that I've been kind of hyper-focused on to look, uh, when I'm looking at a new guitar, check out how well does it stay in tune. Um, until right now, this guitar is doing a, uh, a very good job of staying in tune. <laughs>
Let's see how good the, uh, the pickups clean up, right? So I'm going into my Marshall as always. Right now, no pedals are on. This is kind of my ACDC crunchy tone. That's, it is no, normal. But it cleans up uh, really well. Playability, that's another thing on guitars, you know. And um, my Bach guitars, I was told, always come in two different neck shapes. You either got the thick one or you got the thin one. And right here we have the thin one. This guitar is actually called Cherry Lane. At least that's what stands on the case right there. Cherry Lane, uh, thin taper 60 style neck profile. It's good. It's good in the hand, you know. It, it, it reminds me of my Les Paul um, Gibson Traditional, which also has a 60s. Um, I, I, like, I like the 60s Slim Taper next. Yeah, conclusion, just as I concluded on the SG that I did on Monday uh, from Maybach. Really well built guitars, these Maybachs. Um, they're not too expensive. I mean, you do have to pay a little bit more than 2,000 euros for this uh, Leicester model right here. Um, but I mean, try to get an aged Gibson that's aged this well for nitro finish, um, that's under four kilograms. It would be hard to find a Gibson standard from the standard series that would be in this good quality at the like this Maybach right here. I'm just saying, you know, it's light, it's just good quality, sounds good, the pickups sound good, um, the electronics are really, uh, they function really well, they put some thought into, into, the, into these parties right here. Might not be for you, the fast thing, the slow thing right here. Mm, but, uh, I mean, it's also a pretty easy um, replacement, right? It's not that hard. Um, it's not as good as, a, as my Gibson Custom Shop guitar, I would say. But, I mean, my Gibson Custom Shop costs cost me 5,000 euros. And now you would pay like uh, 6,000 or something like that. Because the prices just went up like crazy. Um, 
yeah, go check them out. Um, I mean, the best thing is always to go to a store and just physically check guitars out before you buy. You always have to do that, right? Um, people, hope you liked this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And um, thanks for watching. See you next time.